Basically, it's the spirit of the Amiga community. You know, we're here for a particular reason, to honor this sign. It's fantastic. But it's, it's about what it is. And, you know, I, I was thinking about this, and it might get a little sappy, and I, I think I'm cutting out a little bit. Probably the batteries are dying. Um, I was thinking about this, and we're all here for our own reasons. We have our own thing. And what's fascinating about our community and, and where we are today um, in terms of the Amiga side, let me know if this cuts out a few more times, I'll run over what's more better. But um, we're all here for our own reasons, but we're also here for a shared reason. And it gets really weird because the shared reason is not consistent. We kind of know it's about this, but why? It gets really weird, but we know it's about this. And that's, it's, it's indescribable. Uh, I was talking to, to Tim earlier, and, and I've been thinking about this problem. You know, is the Amiga better than the Atari? Is it better than the Macintosh? Like, all this stuff we do, we're like, oh, we get into the technology, we got the custom chips, and you know, this is the best architecture, right? And by the way, it won. If you look at any modern computer, it uses the Amiga architecture, <laughs> because it's the better way to do things. But it, it, as you get into these arguments, and you start looking at it, the, the way I, I've been thinking about it is like, why is this what it is? Why do we have WHD look? Why are we here? Why do I have multiple next generation efforts? Multiples. We have the, the EMU64. You can, uh, you can put three different Raspberry Pis on an Amiga 500 doing three different offloads. And I'm sure there's more coming. It's absolutely ridiculous. Why would you do that? Why would you put three other computers inside another computer and have it do one thing? Like, Denise, I need a new display. Why? And, and what, what I got to think about is like, if you think about the one plus one equals two equation, right? I've got young kids, you work on that, it goes pretty quick, it's not that hard. But if you think about that, there's something, and, and, and the other thing about the Amiga is like harder versus software, right? There's something about the Amiga where that equation does not work. It's not one plus one equals computer. It's not a Mac classic. No, no, they're the Mac guys, but like, it's not that. It's not the Coleco or name any other system, television, which were at the time very interesting systems, but they didn't ignite something inside users that's intangible, indescribable, and frightening. I mean, this is kind of frightening, I have to say. <laughs> so, as I think about the Amiga, it's like, okay, when I look at the different systems, you know, who's a, who's a one plus one equals, you know, 1.3? Like, complete failures. They're out there. I'm sure you guys know better than me what those would be. And then there's been a couple systems that have more legs, a little bit more interesting, but nothing is like this. Nothing has driven so many people to spend so many hours in 2022 to do something that makes absolutely no sense is completely irrational. And, and one tip, if you find yourself in a discussion with someone and you talk about your Amiga systems and what you do with them, and they, they kind of look at you funny, and say, oh, it's like ca classic cars. You know people have like nice classic cars? It's kind of like that. And then you can like step out of the, the conversation without getting too freaky. So, <laughs> just a tip for everyone. So, you know, as I think about what we do to get the show going, all the people that, that jump in and help out, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's absolutely insane. It's why we do this. It's, it's, it's just insane. So again, thanks everyone for coming. Appreciate it. All the people that jump in, help out, make this happen. There are not 2,000 people here like we had last weekend at the Amiga 37, which is also <coughs> amazing, but America's a little bigger. Can't get all the Amigas in one place because they just can't freaking get here. Five hours gets you not even to LA. You can't, anyway, it's a different world. So the people here are super hardcore. We know you're away from your families. You're taking time off to be here. We have our exhibitors. And I think we had like, originally like 20 tables, 19 tables, and then we get here and they're all full. People are just like, I got stuff I wanna show. Fantastic, absolutely love it. So um, that was my spiel. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is uh, run over there and press a button, and I'm gonna run back over here. Um, and then we're gonna do um, the award section, and we're gonna start with Jerry. Actually, why, why don't you come up here, Jerry, and then I'll run over and do what I gotta do when you're, when you're up here. Is this thing on? No. Nope. No? That's what I gotta run. All right. Oh, this yeah. is your...
first. Yeah, turn me up. And I got to log in here. Do we have to watch? <laughs> okay. It's our adult audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you'll notice there's two screens. Like, the last time we needed two screens in our Ami West was like 2002. I mean, it's freaking amazing. Thank you. You should be good. Press the, are you green, Jerry? Yes. Yeah, you're on. I'm on? Yep. I'm good? All right, thank you. So before I get into my part, I just want to put out a, another thanks to, to Bill. I mean, not only has been you know, organizing this, but he's been streaming this since before streaming was popular. <laughs> and if you go look at the last few years' streams, they're still up on YouTube, and you can see that they're getting uh, 3,000, 4,000 hits worldwide. So we, we may not be quite as big as Amiga 37, but we've definitely got a worldwide reach thanks to the efforts of our Emmy West broadcast. So thanks for that. Yay. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm kicking this off. Um, it's been uh, a bit of a rough year for, for the community and for the club. We've, we've lost a couple of, of dear friends and family. Um, you've all probably seen we have um, the Chris Brenner um, stuff for sale over on the, on the sales table. Um, he was a great guy. I, I only have the privilege of meeting him um, a handful of times. Um, but if you never meet him, you can see his genius. Because every time I met him, he had something in his hand that he had engineered that was neat, clever, sophisticated. Uh, very first time I saw him, he said, "Check this out." He's like, "He's like, this little board is an Atari 2600." <laughs> and I'm like, "Really?" He's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Well, can't you just do that with that Mister or what have you?" He's like, "No, no, no. Mine takes cartridges." <laughs> and he pulled out a cartridge and he slammed it in there. And it was uh, the ironic thing. It was one of those multi carts, those special ones where you can put an SD card in it that has all the games on it. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> sorry, Jerry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Can I buy your your microphone thing real quick? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, I need power. You need power. You want me to talk louder? Yeah, you can just shout. And everyone in the internet can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is why we're amateurs. All right. Little energizer bunny in there. All right. Thank you. Um, um, so Chris also did things like um, disk mimic for the for the one one dot three systems. Um, I was trying desperately to get him here last year, but I just could not um, get a hold of him. So, so anyways, we will, we will miss um, Chris and his contributions to the community. Um, a little bit closer to home, um, we also lost Bill Clay this year. Uh, we also have some of his um, items on the table over there that he's donated to the club to, to, to pass on in his behalf. So please take a look at that. Honor Bill by giving new life to some of his, his old gear and, and let that live on. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I didn't think I get choked over. I choked up over this. Um, let me get my glasses on here. Oh, so I wrote some stuff down just in case. <clears throat> um, so Bill Clay was a longtime Amigan, a member of Sacramento uh, Amiga Computer Club, Computer Club, um, AKA the Old Geezers Club. His presence will be sorely missed. Uh, and this moral we attempt to put into writing some of the impacts and contributions Bill made to the club and the annual Emmy West show. Um, SAC, uh, Bill was our uh, SAC webmaster for many, many years. Um, making the updates there, making um, the agenda updates for the club meetings and, and that kind of stuff. He was the Emmy West electrician. Um, when I first came into the club, um, I first came into the, my first Emmy West, my job was to be um, Bill's helper in learning how to to run the power and, and the network for the show. Um, uh, obviously without power there is no show. <laughs> um, refreshments. Um, at the show, Bill would always bring a, a little goodie bag with some cookies. Um, also, some of, I've heard some of you mention, he also brought whiskey. I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but when I was going through the electrical supplies this year, um, I was, he had a couple of bags that he had like some, some power strips in and, and what have you. And 
I was pulling it out going, oh, I need to get this in a, in a container so we can store this a little bit better. And I get to the bottom of the power strips and there's a, 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 a plastic bag of these little shot cut glasses in there that he would bring to the show. <laughs> oh. So, oh. <clears throat> so I took that bag and I have a good friend at the office who does a lot of craft work. So she, she put Bill's electrical in that bag and it's over there today. It's got some scotch in there, so please, Go have a drink with Bill. He would love it. Um, he was always generous with his time and his expertise, helping club members. Um, he, he helped me to get into several machines. Um, he came to a club meeting one time and he said, would you like an Amiga 1000? I said, well, I've already had an Amiga 1000. He's like, he's like, well, actually, this is two Amiga 500s. You've got to take them both. Really? They make a 1000. <laughs> <laughs> So if you've seen my yellow um, and black striped Amiga on the corner of the games corner, um, that is my Amiga that, that Bill gave me, that I've um, dressed up a little bit, and that's been our gaming machine for the past four years here at the show. <clears throat> um, Bill was very friendly. To, to know Bill um, was to have a friend immediately. He would just welcome you in, a very kind soul, easy to talk to, fun to have around. Bill will be missed. Um, at this point in time, if anyone has anything they would like to add or say about Bill, I'd invite you to come up and, and say a few words. Of course. Oh, good. I think you can just hold that up to your cheek. You can talk. Yeah, I can talk it up. Putting it on. Uh, I met Bill because of SAC. This is one of the amazing things that Bill was, Bill was talking about, what this group does. The group basically for me was a really important thing to play with Amigos, but even more important, it was to be sociable. Um, I called, when I moved to Sacramento, I found a magazine with a, a SAC ad in the back. I called the person, his name was John Zacharias. He invited me to his house for the meeting that month. Who did I meet there? Um, Chris Brenner, um, and of course Bill Clay, and a couple other people who were important. And John became an important part of SAC, and, and I connected with him and Bill, but it continued. Bill and I became great friends over the years, and he was always generous and always helpful. And in fact, at the table I'm working on is Bill's 5000, which he basically, his family graciously gave to me, and I'm honored to use it to develop and help test beta test for the uh, Amiga NG, which is still going on through people like Bill, who he taught me into buying it, so that I would be a beta tester. Uh, Bill was a, a really important part, very quiet person, but a really important part of the club. And the reason the club does so well is people like you guys and him. Okay. 
Um, the club has two other awards uh, that it gives. Um, there's the, the John Zacharias Award. Uh, John was a consummate um, technologist. Uh, he was a software developer. He wrote an email program uh, for the Amiga back in the days when that was difficult and, and very important. Um, so uh, John started the club. He went to the, the various shows, um, and, uh, the other shows. He really drove Amy West, as, as Michael was talking about. Um, and he passed away in, I think, 2006 or seven. Um, uh, his daughter would come with him as well, one wonderful man. So the John Zacharias Award for Outstanding Technical Assistance to the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club for 2022 uh, is presented to an enthusiastic practitioner of the 3D arts. Um, a longtime Amiga fan uh, and a user from way back, he's given his time and resources to help the SAC storage area, uh, formerly known as the Abyss, as a lot of work. Uh, successfully helping to preserve 3D software and manuals, um, compiling a collection, and makes that available to club members and to uh, folks who attend Amy West. If you don't have this yet, I'll tell you how you can get it. It is ridiculously good. Um, he's enthusiastic about the future of the club um, and sharing his knowledge and uh, the items that bring him interest. He has shared demos of software and has developed uh, and uh, dealt to assist with animation. And he shares animations he has created and explains the details how they work. The John Zacharias Award for 2022 for outstanding technical assistance to the Sacramento Computer Club of Innovation and Media Preservation and those concepts and SAC participation is presented to David Combs. <laughs> Not here. Um, and, and, and when your uh, daughter is getting married, you get a pass. So it's in one pass, he's allowed. Um, if, you, if you have not gotten the USB stick, if you've not seen this, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And is George around? Where's yeah. George? Are there still some left? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He has um, spent a ridiculous amount of time gathering Amiga 3D software. Some of it might be a little legal question. You're not allowed to have that. Um, the software, the available plugins and modules, and all of their manuals, and went through and created PDFs, uh, PDFs of the manuals, and icons of the manuals of the like front of the manual. It's ridiculously well manicured. Um, I think you mentioned Vista Pro. I think it's on there. Like all this stuff. So if you are interested in anything to do with Amiga 3D or preservation or anything, you definitely want to pick one of these up. Um, it, it's just a, a fantastic effort he's put together. So we thank David for that. He would be here, he absolutely would, um, except for he, he did have a, a joyous occasion to attend. The next award that we have um, is the Dan Klausko Award. Dan was also a stellar member of the uh, Sacramento show. Um, how many people went to the Amiga 30th in Mountain View, California? That show would have been a shadow of what it was without Dan. Dan would sleep in RJ's, excuse me, in Dale's, in Dale's RV. He would literally sleep in it. Like, I would bring him a coffee and a burrito for breakfast. The amount of work that he put into prepping those systems, bringing them out of the abyss, which was a house that he had owned that was literally full of Amiga stuff. Um, I can't even describe what he did for that show. So personally, I, I'm very happy to uh, be able to actually deliver this, because this is usually Brian's job. Um, because Dan, uh, he was insane. I mean, he's just an amazing person and helped so much with that effort without even being asked. Like, anybody want to volunteer? He stepped up, he brought machines, he brought monitors, he cleaned them, we figured out RetroBright. And we were experimenting with RetroBright in, in Dale's yard to get the the, the yellow out of the cases and the whole thing, it was amazing. Um, the person who's gonna win this award is a relative newcomer to the Amiga computer and the Amiga community. He started his journey on NG hardware uh, with Amiga OS 4. Uh, he's a dedicated Amiga OS 4 beta tester 
Uh, he has spent countless hours educating and supporting Amiga users and Amiga websites. He is a consistent supporter of Andy West, uh, his attendance, and as a banquet speaker in the past. Um, and he has been a remote member of the, the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club for many, many years. The Dan Klaus Co. Award for 2022 for outstanding service to the Sacramento Amiga Computer Club and Amy West goes to L.D. Stevens. So he will show up a little bit later for uh, religious reasons, which is also valid, um, of course. So we will present this to him when he gets here. And he doesn't know unless he's watching the stream, I guess. But um, uh, so that those are the two club awards. Um, can you uh, open your laptop? Yeah, I will. I'm going to do a little technical work here so that when Tim is ready, we can jump in. So I have a, another wondrous honor, and I was planning on doing this as a total surprise, and it's going to be a total surprise, uh, with the expectation that Mr. Brian would be here, but he's not here. But I'm still going to do it as if we were here. Um, we have decided, the steering committee for this year's Amy West, to create a new award, the Amy West Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, obviously, this is for Brian Deneen, so we know that part's over. If we were looking for suspense, <laughs> um, we we thought about how we could honor Brian for his contribution. After John passed away, this very easily could have hit the floor and not gotten up because it takes so much energy and so much effort. And Brian stepped in and helped keep it going and became the SAC president to keep it going, keep the, the boing ball moving. Now, just keep it moving, keep it going. And he, he used to do this, I don't know, because I haven't ever asked him, going back in that 2007 era, how many people were actually helping him do all these things? Like, who was his steering committee back there? Chuck was with us, so Chuck did a lot of it too. But Brian was the engine that kept this going. And I wish he was here, because then we could say a lot more things, we could like embarrass him, and he would turn pink, and it would be funny. Um, unfortunately, he's home, recovering, and, and hopefully uh, he'll recover soon, and be strong, and then help us plan MAOS 2023. Um, Brian is an avid Amiga fan, uh, using his Amiga to write, um, writing paperbacks in, in, uh, in the day using his X5000 as his daily driver, uh, managed the show details for many years, secured the contract for the meeting space, negotiating lower rates, arranging the catering, strong supporter of Carl Sasserat's Rebel technology. He comes to the show, he promotes the Rebel technologies. Served as president of the Sacramento uh, Club for many years. Um, we probably could have put a number in there, but we can't remember like, how many he's been because he's done it for so long. Many years. Shares his knowledge of the Amigas, Amy West, the SAC meeting. He's been the voice of Amy West, the presentations. Uh, and a strong advocate of preservation. Um, as, as most people in the room, you get in, will probably run into, you get in the conversation of, oh, I, I have a Amiga 3000 UX. Oh, I've got the 2000 UX. Oh, but, but I've got you know a couple 500s in a box. Oh, I've got six 500s. <laughs> Brian has an extensive collection. We play that game all the time. We're like, what do you got? What do I got? Um, but he's been a strong advocate for the preservation of all things Amiga, huge supporter of the Amiga 30 as well, um, and special interest in the hardware. So we're gonna present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Brian. Chris is gonna take that along with the chicken tomorrow. <laughs> and um, I wanted to honor Brian in a unique way, something that we've never done before. And so I'm, I'm gonna show you guys this. 
And I don't know if he's on the stream, if he's going to see this for the first time tomorrow, or whether he's going to scope this tonight. But uh, I asked, I had a barbecue, and Brian came by with his wife, and I said, what does he like? Tie pins, you know, what kind of things? And it turns out that he likes watches. So through the power of the internet, you can go online, and I've never, I've not actually seen how this turned out. I've not seen this yet. <laughs> Thanks to uh, my little helpers for pulling this off. Um, and you can actually design your own custom watch face, and you can make your own custom watches. So I have made for Brian a custom watch that says celebrating 25 years of Amy West on the watch face. So this will be going to Brian's house tomorrow. He probably has no idea. He's probably zonked out and not even watching. So we'll have this here if you guys want to take a look at it. Um, I, I just can't say enough to thank him for enabling me personally in my Amiga habits through the show and all of us and all of us here. Uh, when we learned that he was sick, Jared and I were like, we're stepping up, we're doing it. It's not gonna hit the ground. So we'll have this later. You can come check this sucker out. It, it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and this will be going to Brian tomorrow. Okay? <laughs> so our next speaker is someone you may know. Uh, his name is Tim. And Tim... I'll fix that. There's a... That I can tell when the reverberation is about to start. So, ooh, that fix it. Um, Tim is here. As always, every year we we start our annual planning to figure out who's going to come, who we get to do banquet presentations. Um, I will take full responsibility for the banquet that ran till like 10:30 because we did the trivia thing. <laughs> that didn't work so well. Uh, and the banquet we did with Salam, nice guy, but I didn't realize at the time that he had decided that collecting retro computers would be better for scrap than for preservation. I swear to God, he preserved them before. <laughs> Great guy, uh, started BCF or was an early supporter of BCF, uh, but that was a very strange banquet. Um, but this time I think I have a winner <laughs> uh, as a presenter. So when Tim said that he was uh, uh, interested, or sorry, when I emailed Tim to say, are you interested, and he wrote back and said, yes, I'll do it, I fell out of my chair and immediately called these guys, like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, he did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, web traffic has been through the roof. The, the banquet response has been amazing. Uh, everyone here knows who Mr. Tim Dennison is, created the, the, new, the video toaster uh, and new tech. Um, and hopefully we'll learn a bit about how that happened and whatever that, he wants to talk to us about. Uh,